Now I'm not satisfied with my code as it is right now. There's a, there's a lot of duplicate code here. So if I look at this line 13 to um, to line 23, pretty much is exactly the same as line 25. Uh, all the way down here. Those two are exactly the same. When I see duplicate code like this, I think how can I create something like what we call a method inside the program so I can just reuse with a single line all of these things that I'm doing right here inside a method. So now we're going to generate a method and uh, I'm just going to let the system do it for me. So I'll show you how you can do this very very simply using the built-in um, IntelliSense and AutoCompletion is going to what we call scaffold a solution for us. So I have to explain to the system what I want to get from the method. And reading this, I know that I want to end up, so what's the end goal here? It is to end up with the first number. It's to end up with some kind of number. So I'll write int first number. That's the goal. So I want to end up with getting an integer back from the system when I'm done here, right? Okay. What should I call my method? So I need some kind of name for the method. And I'll just say get number, get input number. So this is just a name. And I'm using what we call camel case here, where every time you have a capitalized char, it means that um, this is get, so that's the first word. I see a capitalized again, input. And I see capitalized again, number. So you can read the, the method step by step using camel casing, what we call it. What should we send in here? Well, I need to send some kind of message to the user because that's not going to be the same every time. So this is kind of what I want. Let's try and read this line because it's a lot easier to read than all of this, right? And what does it say? It says, I want to end up getting a number, a first number from the system. I want to get it as an input from the user. That's why I call it get input number. And I want the user to read this message from me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this function by pressing control and dots. It's popping up here and telling me, do you want to generate this method? Yes, I do want to generate this method. I press OK. And if I scroll down, you'll see this method now. I'll just scroll down. It pops up down here. It's a private method, meaning that's only available for this class. We'll get back to that later. It's a static method. It's something to do with memory. I'll get back to it later, but just know for now it needs to be static to be called from another static function or method, sorry. It returns an integer value. Now, the way I can see that is because I've set it equal to an int value, so it needs to return an int value. And this is the name that we used right here. You see the name, and then it sends in a string, and let's just call it message. So it sends in a string from the outside and that's that message right here. Okay, and then we're going to grab all of this and put it down there. So I grab everything from line 15 to 25 because that's the stuff I want to reuse. I paste it in here and then I need to refactor a bit. So the message it should print to the user is the one that's coming from the outside. It should not write first number, it should just write number as a string just to make it easier. And I'll just paste that in here all the way. It should not say first number, it should just say number because I'm going to do it again and again. There we go. I'll save this and then it should print out that number and then it should return it. So we'll use the return keyword. So what do we have here now? We have a function. Let me show the entire method actually, sorry. Sorry for using function and method. It's a method in C Sharp, but in like JavaScript they call it function. It's just a way for us to do a thing and return a response to the user. So we're going to send in a message. We're going to write that message. We're going to read a line from the user. We're going to try pass it like we did in the last lesson. If it succeeds, we're going to write the number and return it to the user. So this single line right here is actually doing exactly the same as all of these lines did before. So we're going to copy this right here paste it in right here and reuse it. But now instead of writing first number, it's going to write second number. I'm going to put it up here. There we go. And then I'm going to remove all of this noise here. There we go. So now this is actually the functions that we had before, written in a lot more compact way. And then we're just reusing it down here 
again and again. So that's what a method can do for you. And we'll get into methods as we start talking classes, but I just want to show you one way to refactor. Let's run the program again just to make sure that everything is running. And of course, I put this on Git, so now I can actually go back to the previous version if things are not working as I expect them to work. Type in your first number, yes I will. Type in your second number, yes I will. It's 40, everything is still working. Happy days. See you in the next lessons where we start talking about classes, methods, and really start to dive into these things. See you next time.